I think all of us have one thing in common, that warm feeling of nostalgia when I think about games we played as kids. Sometimes it's even enough to hear that familiar sound to go back to the quote unquote better times. I wanted to analyze what made those games so special and why we rarely get the same feelings from modern titles. Now, obviously everyone had different experiences and played different games, especially given that unlike the overwhelming majority of you, I never had consoles as a kid, but I need to talk about my early gaming days because it will provide a lot of context from my point of view. So let's take a walk down the memory lane. The year was 2001. My experience with video games at the time was limited to watching my cousins play Age of Empires for like 15 minutes, not getting the hype at all, and playing Zonix 32 on my dad's work laptop when he brought it home once every couple of weeks. But then everything changed. My father used to have a friend who lived in the same building and he owned brand new blazing fast top of the line Pentium 3 PC and he offered me to play some games on it when we were visiting. From that point on, at least a couple of nights a week I would knock on his door and ask him to play on his computer, which he would usually graciously agree to. The first game I ever played on it was Need for Speed 5, aka Need for Speed Ponche Unleashed that came out for PC and the original PlayStation a year prior. Seeing 3D cards for the first time in my life blew my 9 year old brain. I had no idea that those types of games even existed. Need for Speed 5 didn't have any story or complicated gameplay mechanics whatsoever. All you needed to do is to complete the races to progress throughout the years, from the 1950s all the way to the year 2000. And for a kid, that really worked because unlike Age of Empires that had a learning curve to it, I could just jump in and understand what I needed to do. The second game I invested a lot of hours into was Heroes of Might and Magic 3, which is a turn-based strategy game. It has some complex lore and a lot of in-depth gameplay mechanics and strategies, but because I was a kid, I basically brute-forced my way through it. Amazing Edition and Heroes 3 was the level designer and I remember spending hours in it, creating my own stories and levels where I was pretty OP most of the time, but having that amount of control in a game was unimaginable to me beforehand. Fast forward to 2002 when we bought our first PC, which I swiftly took over for the time my parents were at work. Obviously in addition to previous games I played to death, now that I had access to my own computer, 56k modem and friends in school, I managed to extend my gaming horizons. I used to meet a friend on my way to school and walk with him together. One day it was raining and I got drenched on my way over. When his mother saw me, she told me to come in, gave me a change of clothes, called my parents and they swiftly decided that I should stay there until the rain clears instead of going to school. Also, I just realized that my parents are cool. Who needs school anyway, am I right? And he happened to have the hot new game everyone was talking about and of course I never heard of before. Grand Theft Auto 3. The concept of an open world game was a total freedom was so fresh to me that I was hooked immediately, but of course I couldn't just download it or buy it, so playing it at my friend's place was my only option. But then something major happened. I got my hands on a CD burner, and when I say I got my hands on it, I mean my dad. My dad bought it. Suddenly I could just borrow a CD from one of my friends and like magic I was able to play the same games as them. Paris is a crime guys. Can I still be prosecuted for what I did as a 10 year old? I hope not, because I just confessed to it on camera. Now, obviously my access to games was still fairly limited, but I didn't ask for much because GTA Vice City just came out and oh man did I feel at home in Vice City. I would even say that I became a Vice Citizen. I have no idea how much time I spent playing that game, but it would probably be hundreds if not thousands of hours. I think that to this day, Vice City and Mafia are the two games I played the most. Speaking of Mafia, I also played it for the first time in 2002, which in retrospect wasn't really age appropriate. Not that GTA was, but you know, I turned out fine. Before Mafia I never really paid attention to the story, but in this game I found myself very engaged in it, instead of skipping all the cutscenes like I used to do in other games. And that is not to say that the story in Mafia is mind blowing or anything like that, but it was very different and cinematic when compared to a lot of other games from the same era. For example, in Need for Speed Underground that came out in 2003 by the way, you have to defeat Eddie and become the best street tracer in Olympic City. But despite finishing this game multiple times, I literally had to go to Wikipedia to make sure that the story even existed. Not to mention the huge modding communities that were forming around GTA and Mafia at the time, which added so much reliability value. But with time, as I grew up, the gaming world changed and suddenly most games don't feel so special to me anymore and I guess I wanted to understand why. For this video, I downloaded and played a lot of my childhood games and I must say that it kinda sucks that I wasn't played on consoles at the time, because getting the late 90s and early 2000s games working on a modern PC is a bit of a nightmare. But after managing to play at least some of them, I think I started to understand what made them so special. 
Well, there are actually a couple of reasons. When you watch game trailers, the accent is usually on either the story or the graphics, which don't get me wrong, I don't really mind, because I am super motivated by story in video games, sometimes even more than by the gameplay itself, but if the gameplay is boring and I'm just anxiously waiting for the shootout to be over so I can get to the next story bit, then it might as well be a movie. But back then, when games couldn't look as good and storytelling options were still fairly limited, it pushed game developers to be creative and work within the existing limitations. Like the graphic novel styled cutscenes in the original Max Payne, that had this unique noir look that made them memorable. Also, if the gameplay wasn't fun and engaging or offered something new, then the game probably wouldn't sell, so they had to primarily focus on that, instead of the eye candy or trying to appeal to a wider audience. Speaking of appealing to a wider audience, I don't remember GTA Vice City for its graphics, story, or even gameplay mechanics because there were games that looked better, did characters driving and shooting better than GTA, but it offered a sense of absolute freedom that no other game could compete with. In addition, the industry wasn't as big as it is now. Yes, obviously there were huge companies back then already, but a lot of the studios were still just a bunch of super passionate people who wanted to create fun experiences. Just so you know, GTA 3 was made by a team of 23 people. I mean, sure, you can't swim in GTA 3, but 23 people! GTA 5, on the other hand, was made by more than a thousand. Now, those changes allowed us to have those amazingly detailed and in-depth games we have today, but it also introduced the corporate aspect of it, which can shift the focus of the development team. Another factor that I think has a huge impact is our familiarity with video game tropes and cliches, so nothing feels really unique anymore. Just to illustrate my point, Louis, aka Platinum Bro, invited me to a game show. Welcome back to Who Wants To Be A Platinum Air. Now Ilya, you've been doing really well with the questions so far, I've been really impressed with your gaming knowledge. Not only did you know the exact release date of Metal Gear Solid 4, but you also knew the exact amount of units sold for Spyro 2 on the PlayStation 1. I have no doubt this question will pose you with no difficulty whatsoever. But the question is, an open world game with the emphasis on combat, as you progress through the game you unlock new activities and side missions. You have to defeat the leader of the group you are fighting against. What game is it? Is it A. AC Valhalla? Is it B. Watch Dogs Legion? Is it C. Far Cry 6? Or is it D. Horizon Zero Dawn? Can I call a friend? You'd like to call a friend? Who are you going to call? Can I frisky? You've got no friends, Ilya. <laughs> yeah, okay, fair enough. I'm gonna go with C. Far Cry 6, final answer. Ilya, I'm sorry to say that was in fact the incorrect answer. The actual correct answer was E. All of the above. Wait, what? I didn't even know that was an option. For the next example, let's talk about first-person shooters. Modern variations of them look amazing. They're action-packed, offer huge multiplayer maps, vehicles to use, etc. But I honestly don't think I can tell the difference from the gameplay standpoint between Call of Duty and Battlefield. And yes, I will acknowledge that every franchise and every game has some sort of a gimmick, but it's just what it is. A gimmick. It can even be a good one like stealth and sniping focus of Sniper Elite, or a futuristic setting in Call of Duty Infinite Warfare, but I've already seen that before. In the end of the day, all of those games are just cover-based shooters, which again, there's nothing wrong with that, but it's not a new concept, so unless there's something mind-blowing in the game, it simply becomes forgettable in the long run, even if you enjoyed it in the moment. I still vividly remember the U-Boat stealth mission or storming the Normandy beach for the first time in Medal of Honor Allied Assault and being shocked by the atmosphere and the brutality of the situation, while also recognizing that this is something that real people went through in World War II. Since then, the D-Day landing was put in games countless times, and despite it looking very realistic now, it's something that I've already seen before in some other variation. And same goes for undercover stealth missions. And for the record, I don't blame video game developers for that or saying that modern games are bad or anything silly like that, because it's almost impossible to come up with something that no one has ever done before. I mean, even my videos are inspired by other creators to some extent, but it doesn't change the fact that it's so damn rare for me to be owed by a video game now. I think that that's the main reason that I tend to enjoy more story-focused games, they just usually feel more unique to me overall, despite them having their own cliches. Another factor is my access to games. When I was a kid, I couldn't just get any game I wanted, so I had to enjoy the ones I had and prolong my experience, explore every nook and cranny and take it all in. Basically, I had to find ways to entertain myself within those games, because the alternative was not playing anything at all. Today, with me having a job and being able to afford games, 
I can just buy a bunch of them and jump from one to another without thinking too much about it. I mean, I should probably think more about it. I have to stop buying games, this is getting out of hand. Somebody stop me please! Combine it with the fact that the internet wasn't that big when I was younger, so I couldn't just google the walkthroughs, game secrets and easter eggs. Therefore I would spend longer within a single game than I do now, because I had to figure out things on my own. So obviously those experiences were more memorable. And of course what changed the most is, well, me. As adults, I think we have less sense of wonder and we become more critical. But what I found surprising is, upon replaying those old games, despite them being objectively outdated, I experienced almost the same feelings as the ones I had when I was a kid. And I would lie if I said that I wasn't smiling all the way through. Racing on the Olympic City streets, walking the shallow roads of Eratia and shooting my way out of New York City Metro brought back so many great memories. That being said, if I was 10 again, I would probably have the same feelings toward modern games, because let's be honest, games we have today are better in almost every way than the ones we had 20 years ago. There are still studios of incredibly passionate people who craft amazing experiences and push the industry forward. There are still games with unique ideas, incredible stories and great execution, and I absolutely love playing them. But I just don't feel the same connection because, well, I'm older now, which is hard for me to accept, but something that unfortunately I can't change. I guess all I can do is enjoy the amazing games we have and maybe indulge in video game nostalgia from time to time, while also recognizing that the state of video game industry is pretty damn good right now. Let me know, what are the games you are nostalgic about and what made them so special to you? Thank you for watching.